You know, it doesn't matter if you have the best crappy jig in the world, the best jig head in the world, the best rod and reel, the best line. If you don't figure out the principles of what I'm gonna show you in today's video, you're gonna struggle 365 days of the year. And, and honestly, you're just gonna be wasting time. Now don't get me wrong, I've been crappy fishing pretty much my entire life. I'm 33 years young. And every day I'm out on the water, either A, I'm learning some new way to control my jig, or B, I'm just learning some new thing that a crappy does that I wasn't expecting. You know, I can go out there 365 days of the year and adapt how I present my jig and how the fish are acting to be able to catch them. Now that doesn't just include, oh, well, God dang, man, you're staring at that forward-facing sonar. It's cheating. No, this, this applies without any electronics. If I can find fish, I can change the way I fish to catch more. So that's what we're gonna be covering on today's video is just pretty much why, how, and what happens when a crappy bites. Now knowing when a crappy bites, now I just, I don't just mean, okay, well I felt the thump on the end of my line. So, you know, there's fish here. That, that's awesome. You could do that any time of the year. You know, you, you can feel the thump and you're like, oh man, we're, on, we're in them now. And then you never catch another fish because A, you didn't understand why you got the bite in the first place or B, there's one fish there, that fish is dumb, and you just happen to catch it. And we're trying to eliminate all that. And you know, there's, a, there's an old saying, there's only 10% of fish in 90% of your water, which I wholeheartedly agree. But at the same time, there's so many crappy in every lake I've ever been to, they're not that hard to find. Understanding some of this, you've got to understand how a crappy Bites. So now I'm gonna throw up some forward-facing sonar footage of a crappy I caught this past winter. Now you can cry about it, whatever. You know, you can go to Walmart and buy you some Kleenexes and go, you know, get you a little, a little nappy. It'll be all right. But this fish, I'm dropping on this fish. He's a single fish out there. These are the easiest fish in the world to catch. I'm dropping on this fish. I'm dropping it straight on his head. Now, as I hover this jig above this fish's head, three key things happen. This fish fills the jig in the water, so he comes up to look at. Now, the water was kind of stained. It wasn't exactly dirty, dirty, but it wasn't exactly clean. You might've had a half a foot of visibility. So I was using monkey milk. I love using natural colors in muddy water. Uh, I've said it time and time again, they come up to look at the jig, if the water's muddy, the minnow is not gonna be chartreuse. It's gonna be gray, white, whatever. But this, the key thing we're gonna take away from this is this fish comes up and looks at my jig. That's his first step. He fills the jig, he comes up and looks at it. You know, now once he sees that the jig is eatable, then he eats it. But the key thing we're seeing is he noses up to this jig. Let's see. We're gonna give an example. Because Stephen likes doing examples that he ain't gotta edit. This is a jig, okay? This is a two inch OG monkey milk. The fish comes up and he, you know, the jig's falling in the water. Fish is here swimming, you know, crappy's slow. He's swimming, big old football jig popping the jig, whatever. Huh. So he comes up up under it. Now the crappy's not going to come up here and bite this jig. He's going to come up under it, check it out. It checks out, eats it. Now, what can you take from that to apply it 365 days of the year? Come on, guys. I'm going to wait on you. Take, take me a little, little break. No, I'm just kidding. When you're fishing and you're throwing a a 1/16 ounce jig head, 
if I'm throwing this jig head right here, 1 16th ounce, versus a 1 64 ounce, you see, you see, the, see the, the weight difference? Now, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh man, go buy my jig heads because they're the best in the world. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. I, I don't care if you're using any kind of jigs, whatever. If your jig's falling too fast, your fish is never going to be able to come up, look at it, and bite it. If you're fishing a roll of docks and you're throwing a 1 16th, a 1 8th, and you have no earthly idea in the world how to control the depth of that jig, you're wasting time. You're, you're bass fishing, pretty much. That's what you're doing, you're bass fishing. A bass is going to react and chase a lot, lot harder than a crappy will. Now don't get me wrong, crappy and bass, they act kind of the same, but a bass, if I jerk, 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 jerk with a jerk bait, that'll make them bite. Crappy, if I put it in their face, that'll make them bite. I mean, you can pop it and jerk it, whatever, that kind of will make them bite, but it's not like a bass. Okay, anyway, we get off subject. Now, back to the what I said before, going down a roll of docks with a 1 16th or 1 8th ounce jig head. If you throw down that dock, you know, most docks are, you know, six, eight feet long. So you're throwing out eight feet of line. You're going to be fishing six feet in a matter of seconds. If that, that jig's going to go in the water and go straight and it's going to pendulum back to you. Now, if there, if that dock's in 30 feet of water and those fish happen to be in 12 to 15 feet, hey, it could work for you. But if you're fishing 20 feet of water, you're throwing out eight feet of line, more than likely those fish are under that dock or on top of brush. Now, what a lot of people get wrong about crappy fishing is, okay, this brush is in 20 feet of water. I need to fish uh, 14 feet or 16 feet. No, you need to fish the top of that brush and a little bit above it. If you're in 20 feet of water and that brush comes up to 10 feet and there's fish above it, you need to be fishing six feet of water. If you're fishing a dock in 30 feet of water, but you see in fish at six to eight feet, you need to be fishing four feet deep. So when you're fishing a 1 16th ounce, this fish never has a chance to bite your jig. If you're fishing a smaller jig, but you're winding it as soon as it hits the water, that fish never has a chance to bite the jig. You've got to learn how and how fast a jig head works. It doesn't matter if you have the most magical jig in the world, unless you know you got a jig that automatically just goes to a fish, it's not gonna work. Now this takes time on the water. It's, it's not an easy process to be able to catch them all year long. Uh, yes, yeah, sure, go buy a live scope and you're gonna be amazing. That's just not how it works. You know, a lot, I go out on a lot of people's boats that paid me good money to show them how to use that screen because they buy it and they, they, they realize, hey, this, this isn't as easy as I thought it was. So it's same with 2D. You've got to know what you're looking at on 2D to be able to find the fish. And the same with fishing with instincts. Most, of, most people that say they go catch them without any electronics, have been catching the same fish their entire life. If you take me to say Lake Hartwell right now, put me in a canoe with a paddle, well, you ain't even gotta do that. You can put me in a 2024 bass boat with no electronics. I can guarantee you I will not catch anything unless I just get really, really lucky. Because when you're fishing a new body of water, you can't just say, hey, that dock looks good, there's fish on it. Now, if I have a map, I could kind of up my odds. But at the same time, if I don't have anything to tell me there's something there, I'm probably not gonna catch anything. That's what I'm saying. A lot of people that hate on electronics are the older generation. No offense to you guys, because I know that's kind of who watches my videos. And you're, you're stuck in your ways, and you're gonna fish the same brush pile that you've been fishing for 20 years. But learning how to control your jig's depth is the key to finding success on the water. 
162, 116, and a 180 size jig head. And there's probably some, 124. <coughs> Excuse me, there's probably some I still missed. Every jig head has a different fall rate. Every jig head kind of makes the jig do different stuff. Now, what, now how, do, how do we overcome this? What I suggest is the next time you're out on the water, go find a bank that has a bottom that has nothing. Like a sandy bank or something that you can kind of see in the water. You know, get out to about five to eight feet deep, cast your jig out and count, and watch the jig fall. And try to see how, how long it takes you to get to the bottom. And then adjust. You know, with four facing sonar, I'm able to cast a 164, 60 feet out, watch that jig come down and wind as soon as it hits the sweet spot. Same with a 116. I mean, you can put a, a lead bullet on there and throw it out there and be able to control it. And you learn that stuff. But if you don't have nothing to, or you're not good at finding your jig on the screen, none of that really matters. So you've got to overcome it by doing other things. I cannot t um, tell you the amount of time I spent on the ladder of my mom and dad's swimming pool throwing a 132 or a, 16, uh, a 164 ounce jig head in the swimming pool and counting down because I knew the swimming pool was like four and a half feet deep. Time on the water, time at the house, everything plays a key part in catching fish. So the title of the video is This Changed How I Crappy Fish. So what changed? controlling your jig. If you're not controlling your jig, you're missing fish. If you're not above that fish, you're not gonna catch them. Plain and simple, take it how you want. This is this is life. I mean, I'm, I'm giving it to you straight up. There is no easy button in fishing. Sure, life's gonna show it to you, but if you can't put that jig in his mouth, you're not gonna catch shit anyway. 